from the uh, Deutschland to tell us what they're doing. You can sense my energy, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> So hi everybody, um, and thank you for inviting me to the conference um, to introduce our education programs. I would like to present how Wikimedia Deutschland has developed ways to support educators and other target groups. So if you have any questions, um, feel free to ask. I think I will fill up the whole time, so we've probably got 10 minutes at the end. Um, so in case you thought my presentation was going to be in German, it's not. Um, <laughs> Bildung um, means education and business knowledge. So um, what we've been doing since the beginning of this year is forming a new department that concentrates all educative, um, um, all educative activities in this new department called education and knowledge. So we want to present an offer to everybody with knowledge to share. Um, so anybody who would like to participate is welcome to do so. Um, so our message is join us, it's fun, so we'd like to promote um, participation through practical experience. So anyone with experience, uh, anyone who would like to experience knowledge uh, can join our projects. And we would like to inform and educate about Wikipedia. So what does this new department education and knowledge actually offer? Um, to sum it up in one sentence, um, we would like to offer something for everybody and to increase the diversity of our audience. Um, like on the slide you can see the people we're already addressing. So we um, have students um, in our audience, teachers. We also have a program for the Generation 50 plus and we're trying to gain, uh, to reach like more women, so to expand our diversity. I'm sure there's more groups that we haven't addressed at all yet. So our future vision is um, the diversity. Now, um, we started off with like different programs. So we had um, single programs. The first two were the school program and silver knowledge. So the school program is obviously targeted at teachers and students, um, but I'm talking about secondary school, so it's not in university. Um, it's actually secondary education, um, usually about like 15, 14, 50 year old, we all up to 19. So that's how long school um, takes the journey. Um, and we also found that teachers are a very important um, group to address. Uh, silver knowledge is aimed at the generation 50 plus. Like sometimes we say seniors, but we find it offensive. So um, we're, trying, we're trying to think about the, the uh, wording because we're not actually reaching the people that we, we try to um, have in the program. And most recently, we've started the Wikipedia University program, which is kind of like um, the global education program, but we have a few differences. So in general, the aims of these programs are to inform and educate about Wikipedia and free knowledge, uh, to promote Wikipedia as a collaborative working tool, and to motivate um, diverse people to actively engage in Wikipedia. Um, if you look at each of the programs, it's obviously um, a little more specific. So, um, if you think about the school program, you have to we'd like we'd like to encourage um, teachers and students um, to advise them on the correct and critical handling of Wikipedia and education. The Silver Knowledge program is aimed at uh, people with an extensive professional and life experience um, to become Wikipedia authors because they have a lot to tell and it's not in yet. And with the university program we actually try to use Wikipedia as a method in academic teaching and we've heard a lot about that now, so it's pretty much the same reasons. Now how do all these different programs work? Um, like one of the first programs was the school programs, like I said. Um, so we do workshops directed at teachers and pupils and um, we explain basically how Wikipedia works, like the underlying structures, how to use the talk pages, where can you find the history? How can I get an article back if it's like um, gone, deleted? And um, how to cite the articles? How can I use pictures? Um, we also uh, talk about um, free contents, how to use them. So there are questions that are really interesting for teachers and as well pupils. But now we're kind of shifting the focus um, because we thought that students actually, they know so much about Wikipedia already, we need to engage them more in the program. So. We started doing editing workshops with um, pupils, um, but these take a longer time, so 
usually they don't have that much time in, in uh, the curriculum of, you know, like a school year. So, um, yeah, just like two different focus. Uh, that's just a newspaper article on the school program. Um, if you would like a detailed translation, I could give that to you if you want to. But basically, um, it's a report from a local newspaper about the school program and it describes the motivation from a Wikipedia's perspective and why he actually supports our education program. So what he basically says is that he's um, surprised by how, how little the students who are very active online know about Wikipedia and the underlying structures. And he always tells them like a story of how like one Wikipedian made up like the story um, and put it, sneaked it into Wikipedia and how all the press and politicians would copy it the next day. So <laughs> basically that's like a, an advice to um, the pupils not to rely on one source only. Um, yeah, the article is quite long, but if you want to know any more, I can tell you. So the program Silver Knowledge is made up of three interdependent modules to promote active participation of the generation 50 plus. Um, like three workshops sounds like a lot, usually they take place within um, a month or so, so you have a week in between each course, but um, we notice that it's not enough for the generation to actually uh, get hooked and become active Wikipedians. So we're trying now to uh, provide a continuous guidance, so, um, like organize, maybe organize uh, regular meetings um, probably every other month to just um, have someone um, there that can answer questions for these people. And we also found that the approach through like uh, groups of interest is much easier. So if you have like a group of old people that is interested in history, like an association or something, um, that they have a topic to bring into Wikipedia, that this approach is really um, the best way to get them. Um, for example, we have one editor who is, he might, he might be 73, 74, and his daughter immigrated to Norway, so he's been there a lot of times and he knows a lot of, about the history and stuff that's missing in the German Wikipedia, so he's been writing a lot about that. Um, so that's like his topic in Norway, and he always just um, writes about Norway, but it's fine, you know, it's like his favorite uh, topic. And again, another newspaper article about uh, silver knowledge, so we actually do get um, publicity from the papers. Um, and here it's uh, written from a perspective of a participant, and she has like a historical um, interest. So she lived in one city, moved to another, and there's like a historical connection, and she doesn't find anything about that in Wikipedia. So she had a topic, she went to the workshop because she knew it was there, so and that's how she got hooked. Now, our university program, um, it looks more complicated, but it's not. Um, I call, I start with a volunteer Wikipedia. Um, it's actually people who do lectures as well, so it's like a whole network and we use like the same resources. But um, now the volunteer Wikipedia, I think it's what the ambassador would be, I'm not sure. Um, they teach the university professor or give like an intensive training in Wikipedia, so the professor is able to write and edit uh, Wikipedia articles, and they do that before the start of the semester. Um, so he's in a position to actually be a Wikipedia himself, and then he will go to the university press and will teach the students and uh, let them ed edit articles and write, create, revise articles, pretty much in the same manner that you've uh, described before. And um, he's also in charge of the grading of uh, and marking of the, um, yeah, the assignments they have to do. And he does the evaluation as well. And we found that in our, at the program's only in the pilot stage, like the summer semester of 2012, we went through the pilot stage, so it's just brand new. Um, we found that the relationship between the university professor and the volunteer Wikipedian is like the strongest, because like in all things concerning Wikipedia, whenever there's a question, they will ask them. You know, the professor will go to the Wikipedia and ask them, oh, how do I solve this problem? Um, the students are usually undergraduates, so in their second, third, or fourth semester, they participate in the course and become active Wikipedians. So they change from a passive role to an active role, which is quite important um, that they feel, uh, actually, I'm not just writing this assignment, it goes to the bin, so uh, I'm actually like, publicly visible. Um, 
joining the community. Uh, I, I don't know if that actually worked out the way we wanted because they can communicate through the talk pages and work with the articles that went into Wikipedia. Uh, and we were hoping that they would communicate in a nice way, but we find that the tone is quite rough in the German Wikipedia. So um, it's one of the, the issues we still have to deal with. And then uh, Wikimedia Deutschland also provides materials uh, like information, um, like brochures and video tutorials. Um, the university professor and the volunteer competitors have to write various reports throughout the semester on the progress of the whole um, program. And what I put down as WP colon HP is the Wikipedia website for the, um, the, our program. So they communicate through that as well. So the question was, how could we streamline all those um, efforts of the different education programs into um, one like big pool? So education and knowledge, knowledge does that by um, shared organizational resources and a shared network of active volunteering experience who are um, carrying out these workshops. So the very same people are active in our different educational programs. The advantages are quite obvious, like we have an exchange of experiences between the volunteer lecturers within and among the programs, and we can also uh, continuously and better qualify those volunteer lecturers or Wikipedians. So we organize like um, weekend seminars twice a year um, to, you know, to just talk about their experience, exchange experience, and also, um, yeah, basically exchange experience. Um, by now, we actually have a national network, about 25 to 30 um, active Wikipedians acting as um, lecturers. <coughs> um, so whenever there are inquiries from schools or other, other educational um, institutions, uh, we can kind of like geographically um, locate them. So we don't have a lot of uh, traveling to do. And obviously, it also helps to effectively use the personal resources in our Berlin office and all of this um, ensures a long-term efficiency. So Wikimedia will also find external partners for the different um, interested future participants. Um, so it's one of our main um, purposes, like find schools, find partners, and other uh, educational institutions, but also um, to do networking. So like to provide a platform for everyone who's interested. Um, I just have two more examples. Um, we have um, we started a cooperation with uh, the Ministry of Education of the province of Lower Saxony. And that was published in the news. Um, we would teach um, teachers to use Wikipedia in class, but that's again like secondary school teachers. So they would be going into their classes in their respective schools, and it's, um, it's in a whole project. It's all over the province, so it's not just one specific um, town. Um, so yeah, that, that's been quite, quite big. And the second one is the website of the German Senior League. And the German Senior League is one of our cooperation partners for Silver Knowledge. And if you go on their website, you get this um, you know, promotion of our project. So that's like two examples for the um, collaboration partners. So what does all of this mean for uh, education and knowledge? Like I said in the beginning, we would like to invite people with knowledge to share and to participate. Um, we must uh, support new authors and volunteers. Usually they have technical issues and they really need personal contact. That's like one of the conclusions we um, draw from this. Um, and we will have to connect further and strengthen our network to um, give a satisfactory answer for anyone who's interested in Wikipedia. So if you have any more questions, ask me now or send an email. <laughs> Thank you. Your silver program. Uh, yeah. I'm from GIST Texas, so I'm interested in accessibility uh, in, in this area. Um, so, as your silver program exposed accessibility issues because you're working with a much older and more mature age group who are likely to have uh, acquired disabilities during their lifetime. Uh, what exactly do you mean by that? Um, well, are, are you? 
Uh, are you able to gather information from those who are visually impaired, hearing impaired? And can they tell their stories through Wikipedia and edit the content and consume the content as effectively as the rest? I think we haven't um, focused on those people at all. Like uh, the, the partners that we have, they would advertise that we're doing a course that whoever's willing to come um, can attend. But like, we do not specifically address, not yet address people with uh, any sort of challenges. Do you think you've set the age limit too young with respect to some of the people in the room? Um, <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you not think, you know, I think a lot of the over 50s are actually. Um, they don't feel it old, I know. And, and also, <laughs> they, you know, perhaps they've got quite a lot of skills already. I'm just wondering if you think it should be set at the, um, perhaps the over 60s. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, yes and no. Like, we actually would like to address people still working and to have a lot of uh, working experience to bring in their ideas but <coughs> that's the theory and like reality we actually uh, do get seniors 70, 75, 80. More gold um, than silver. But I mean they do have yeah but they do have um, a lot of stuff to tell as well it's just then the technical issue becomes more prominent. It's Keating from Wikimedia UK. How many uh, staff and how many volunteers do you have working on each of those three strands of the program? Well, uh, at the office, at Wikimedia uh, Deutschland office, there's five people working on the education programs, and the Wikipedians slash lecturers, volunteers, um, is about 30, 25 to 30. <coughs> and how, how are those 30 recruited? Voluntarily, like they know, like they started off with the short school program, so um, I think they just advertised it on the website, and whoever wanted to participate. Yeah. I'm very envious of your network and the, the fact that you can drop somebody in geographically. I'd love to have that in the United States. Yeah. How did you do it? How, how did that come about, and how did you how did you make that happen? I think just the the online presence, um, and then there's a. Um, I think a conference of all the, the German speaking chapters. So, as, I suppose my colleague promoted, we want to do an education program who is interested. Um, so, it just happened naturally. It just happened naturally. <laughs> <laughs> Not naturally. Organic but, growth, yeah. But I, mean, but I mean, if you're in a conference, there's obviously people from all over Germany, Switzerland, and Austria. You mean a conference and, like this one? Yeah. And so my colleague, she would probably have promoted um, the education program and that she was looking for volunteers who would like to um, carry out workshops for her. I think that's how it's going on. It evolved over time, obviously. No, I understood it was not instant. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was just looking at if there were any tips we could pick up. I don't know who was first, but I'll keep on describing. Uh, Roger Bounty from Wikimedia UK. I was picking up a point you were coming on, uh, you took up the poor tone that some people would use on the German. We have the same, oh, same problem on the English because we get, when I've taught in a secondary school, you get new students who go on and write their first article, and within 10 minutes they've been consumed by the Wikipedia police and brought <laughs> into um, and insulted and their articles deleted. Have you had any solutions as to how to solve this problem of allowing people to come and play in our playground without beating them up? Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's not a perfect solution to that, but you can, um, like the volunteer Wikipedians, we always tell them, please um, make sure, like, because they know each other, you know, even if they just use the usernames, but they would like uh, write to them, please do not just try all the efforts of right. the beginners, you know, but some, sometimes it helps, sometimes it doesn't. Like, we still have the same problem. It's just persistent. But your secondary school program is not directly <coughs> oriented towards getting people to create new articles. Is that what I understood? Uh, yeah, no. The teachers, the teachers do not want to become Wikipedia authors. They just want to know how to, um, how they can find out it's if, if their students Wikipedia actually copied first. out of Wikipedia. Yes. So yeah. you're not you're not trying to set up the same situation. No, no, no. Quite no. young students. It's a different approach. It's a completely different approach because teachers' um, sure. focus is not on editing. Um, in the UK, we've got the University of the Third Age, which kind of 
trying to involve older people in various educational activities. Uh, have you got anything in general like that, or any organisations where you've had successful partnerships in drawing well, people in to silver knowledge? Um, I know that um, Third Age Online Town um, is, is the big partner, and so silver knowledge is the part of that. Um, it's one of the partners in the Tau movement. So yeah, we're getting support from them, but it's independent as well. I, I, I'm not sure like where this question quite is within this. I, I, you're, so you're going into universities and schools and physically being there, and then there's online support as well. I'm wondering about if there's sort of a middle ground for things like Skype and things like that, or whether you've done anything like that where it's not just text-based online or not just in person. Uh, not yet. Okay. Um, we're just using Wikipedia and one to one or like personal contact. <coughs> and there's a program, uh, which I'm not sure if it exists in the English Wikipedia, must be the mentor and mentor program. Yeah. Can I make a comment about yeah. one of your slides? that struck me quite forcibly compared with one that, that Annie put it. And that was the one about the, the volunteer Wikipedia and the support that they put into the, the classes. And what struck me was that the, the key link in it, there, is between the volunteer Wikipedia and the university professor, the lecturer, yeah. who actually deals with the course. That link was actually missing from Annie's side. And I, I actually think that that's something that, that we need to look at. Because it seems on the English Wikipedia, our volunteer Wiki, Wikipedians, the, the ambassadors, seem to have a focus with the students as being their principal yeah, that's, point that's of interaction. The difference between the programs. And there's a difference in philosophy that I think is absolutely crucial. Now, I don't know at the end of the day which is the best, or whether you need a combination of both. But that, to me, is the more scalable solution, because you you're actually cascading knowledge down and the university professor then doesn't need the Wikipedia volunteer year after year after year because if they've learned something they can actually that work is. more independently but the only question that then bothers me is what's the size of the groups that you're dealing with because I'm interested in scaling this further with down students, you mean? with students yeah. um, in, in the, on the pilot uh, stage there was uh, five universities participating and they had, I think, between 8 and 20 students, depending on right. the course. So the, the professor would only have to support between 8 and 20 students? Yeah. Okay. That but I mean, it's sense. just the course um, that you do in university, and probably takes place like once a week, and he'll uh, put assignments for them to do each week. And then at the end, I think they actually do it in the sandbox, and then at the end they just move it into cool. the real Wikipedia. Thank you. Yeah, I, I don't expect <coughs> you to know the answer to this question. Okay. I'm going to throw it in anyway, just as a thought. Um, how, how much do you think um, the, the relative success or the relative growth of Wikipedia as an organisation in Germany as opposed to um, in the UK is um, down to the fact that there isn't a very large and powerful country on the other side of the Atlantic that speaks German? <laughs> Are you really expecting me to answer that? <laughs> I couldn't, but maybe someone else can. Uh, I think it is. I think the, the fact that Wikimedia Deutschland is more coterminous with the German Wikipedia community is certainly a factor in why Wikimedia Deutschland is such a successful organisation. <laughs> Chris is the chairman of the board, actually. <laughs> <laughs> if you look at uh, the way different language Wikipedias work, um, uh, for example, Catalan uh, is ridiculously disproportionately large, the Catalan Wikipedia, uh, for fairly obvious reasons, because it's a very important vehicle for Catalan aspirations, and has the Catalan government all over it. Same sort of thing with the Dutch Wikipedia, the Norwegian Wikipedia. Uh, you know, so country. I think I think it's important to 
countries that don't or language languages that aren't English, uh, Wikipedia can play a very important role locally. Uh, I mean, often in, in, in many of these languages, like Catalan, we are actually the biggest encyclopedia, or bar you know, bar any. And the Americans don't have chapters, so the UK chapter is actually the largest chapter on English Wikipedia. And we have Welsh, of course, within our Wikipedia. <laughs> 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 we where, where we are again, I think we're the largest Welsh language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He wrote it all. Thanks. Thank you.